a patient reports protruding tongue and stiff neck after taking an antipsychotic, as a PMHNP you know this is as a result of which chemicals? A. Acetylcholine perfusion. B. Acetylcholine depletion. C. Dopamine perfusion. D. Dopamine depletion. The correct answer is D. Dopamine depletion. A 44-year-old patient who has been taking acetylopram, Lexapro, 20 mg daily for generalized anxiety for 6 months, she currently has no side effects from medication. GAD score of 3 today. As a PMHNP, how would you adjust her medication? A. Discontinue Lexapro. B. Continue 20 mg daily. C. Increase to 25 mg daily. D. Reduce to 10 mg daily. The correct answer is B. Continue 20 mg daily. You have a 55 year old female patient. You observe dystonia, akinesia, mutism, and increased plasma myoglobin while checking labs. As a PMHNP, what is your most likely diagnosis? A. Tardive dyskinesia. B. Muscle atonic. C. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. D. Serotonin syndrome. The correct answer is C. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. The degree to which healthcare services are provided to individuals and populations based on current best evidence that increases the attainment of the desired health outcomes is known as A. Cost B. Quality C. Equity D. Access The correct answer is B. Quality When a nurse is fighting for the rights of patients, this is known as A. Patient interference B. Patient advocacy C. Patients' rights D. None of the above The correct answer is B. Patient advocacy A 62-year-old female patient has trouble with planning and executing some of the tasks assigned to her as a PHMNP. You understand that this part of the brain is implicated? A. Temporal B. Limbic C. Frontal D. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex The correct answer is D. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex A 12 years old patient came with parents and has a diagnosis of schizophreniform and most likely progress to schizophrenia. Based on your insight on social skill and personality changes associated with schizophrenia, what will you do as a PHMNP? A. Refer to social service and ask to evaluate mental health need. B. Refer to social skills and exercise program for schizophrenia. C. Ask point or physical therapist to do nothing. D. Give psychotherapy once a month. The correct answer is A. Refer to social service and ask to evaluate mental health need. Patient was given perfenazine and two hours later he developed facial and back spasm. As PMHNP, how would you diagnose this patient? A. Akathisia. B. Myoclonia. C. Dystonia. D. Akathisia. The correct answer is C. Dystonia. Which of the following is a therapeutic technique to facilitate a health behavior change in a 28 year old male with substance use disorder who is in denial regarding the severity of his habit? A. Solution focused therapy. B. Strategic therapy. C. Psychopharmacology with naltrexone, 50 mg daily. D. Motivational interviewing. The correct answer is D. Motivational interviewing. 
and nurse ask you, why do we not give risperidone with Reglan? As a PMHNP, you respond. A. Reglan will cause constipation. B. Combination will cause tardive dyskinesia. C. Combination will increase calmness in your patient. D. It will terminate blood flow to the gut and cause death. The correct answer is B. Combination will cause tardive dyskinesia. A 32-year-old patient comes in and state that she has been quite miserable all her life and really have many thoughts of suicide. As a PMHNP, you will document this assessment finding under A. Thought process B. Orientation C. Judgment D. Thought content The correct answer is D. Thought content While assessing a patient, you observed echolalia. As a PMHNP, where do you document this? A. Thought content. B. Thought process. C. Thought delusion. D. Thought echo. The correct answer is B. Thought process. You have a patient taking kava kava, which medication cannot be combined with kava kava? A. Tylenol. B. Antipsychotics. C. Labetalol. D. Benzodiazepines. The correct answer is D. Benzodiazepines. A type of literature review that identifies, selects, and analyzes research articles concerning a health condition, disease, or other health-related practice. A. Meta-analysis. B. Randomized control trials. C. Systematic review. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. Systematic review. A case ruled by the Supreme Court that an individual who was capable of surviving safely in freedom by himself or with the help of others could not be confined, PMHNP knows that this is A. Ford case B. Durham case C. O'Connor v. Donaldson case D. Psychiatric case The correct answer is C. O'Connor v. Donaldson case. Psychotic disorders and intellectual disability, formerly mental retardation, are defined in psychiatric practice. Which statement about these conditions is true? A. Diminished and confabulatory self-reporting is a sign of a psychotic disorder. B. Talking to oneself may not be related to psychosis as this observed in many individuals with developmental disabilities without psychosis. c. An imaginary friend in an adult patient with intellectual disability is characteristics of psychosis. d. Observable signs of responding to internal stimuli only to be witnessed in one setting. The correct answer is b. Talking to oneself may not be related to psychosis as this observed in many individuals with developmental disabilities without psychosis. A physician constantly checks her email throughout the day to monitor for important messages. Under what kind of operant conditioning schedule is she behaving? A. Fixed ratio. B. Variable ratio. C. Fixed interval. D. Variable interval. The correct answer is D. Variable interval. Susan, a 10 year old patient with anxiety symptoms including worry, restlessness, concentration difficulties, and stomach aches, is scheduled for an appointment with her parents to discuss her symptoms and potential treatment options. A. Schedule a separate session with Susan's parents to discuss her symptoms and treatment options. B. Begin individual therapy sessions with Susan without involving her parents initially. C. 
involve Susan's parents in the assessment process and collaborate with them to gather information. D. Suggest to Susan's parents that they should give her more space and independence to manage her anxiety. The correct answer is C. Involve Susan's parents in the assessment process and collaborate with them to gather information. Mr. Jones, a 68-year-old male, has been referred for a comprehensive psychiatric evaluation due to concerns about his cognitive function and mental status. His primary care physician administered the mini mental state examination, and the physician seeks your expertise in interpreting the results. A. High cognitive functioning. B. Mild cognitive impairment. C. Severe cognitive impairment. D. Normal cognitive aging. The correct answer is B. Mild cognitive impairment. Tessie, a 42 year old woman with major depressive disorder, is struggling with low mood, lack of energy, and decreased interest in activities. As part of her treatment, a PMHNP discusses mental health aspects, including the term apoptosis found in an article. A. A process of abnormal cell growth and division. B. A type of cell communication in the nervous system. C. Natural cell death and shrinkage. D. The formation of new neural connections in the brain. The correct answer is C. Natural cell death and shrinkage. A patient with major depressive disorder is prescribed a monoamine oxidase inhibitor for seven days. Due to dietary restrictions and potential drug interactions, they switch to a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The patient's waiting time is crucial to avoid serotonin syndrome. A. 24 hours. B. 5 days. C. 14 days. D. 30 days. The correct answer is C. 14 days. As a PMHNP, you are assessing a married couple who has been experiencing high levels of caregiver stress due to caring for their adult son with schizophrenia. They are struggling to cope and have asked about the possibility of respite care. What is the primary goal of respite care in this scenario? A. Providing long-term care for the son in a specialized facility. B. Teaching the couple new caregiving techniques. C. Offering temporary relief from the demands of caregiving. D. Initiating involuntary commitment for the son's safety. The correct answer is C. Offering temporary relief from the demands of caregiving. Agnes, a Zimbabwean 34-year-old woman who recently moved to the U.S., presents with persistent sadness, lack of interest in activities, changes in appetite, disrupted sleep, and difficulty concentrating. She feels isolated and homesick since her move. The PMHNP clinic must determine the appropriate initial approach. A. Begin discussing medication options to alleviate her depressive symptoms. B. Explore Agnes's cultural background and impact of migration on her mental health. C. Recommend intensive therapy sessions to address her isolation and homesickness. D. Suggest joining local community groups to help her make friends quickly. The correct answer is B. Explore Agnes's cultural background and impact of migration on her mental health. A 45-year-old woman with a history of hypertension and a previous stroke presents with a sudden onset of elevated mood, decreased need for sleep, increased energy, racing thoughts, and impulsive behaviors. She has been engaging in reckless spending and has grandiose ideas about her abilities. Which age is most likely associated with the onset of this manic episode? A. 15 years old. B. 30 years old. C. 45 years old. D. 60 years old. The correct answer is C. 45 years old.
Angela, a 30-year-old female with depression, has been experiencing persistent feelings of hopelessness, fatigue, and loss of interest in activities. Her Beck Depression Inventory score of 20 indicates a potential diagnosis for Angela's depression. A. Mild depression. B. Moderate depression. C. Severe depression. D. Very severe depression. The correct answer is B. Moderate depression. As a PMHNP at a community mental health clinic, a concerned individual informs you about their boyfriend's suicide plans, specifically at a local McDonald's restaurant. The individual is unsure of how to handle the situation and seeks your guidance. A. Provide the concerned individual with a list of crisis hotlines and suggest they encourage their boyfriend to reach out for help. B. Advise the concerned individual to accompany their boyfriend to McDonald's to keep an eye on him. C. Instruct the concerned individual to immediately call Child Protective Services. D. Recommend the concerned individual to talk to their boyfriend's family about the situation. The correct answer is C. Instruct the concerned individual to immediately call Child Protective Services. As a PMHNP in a community mental health center, you encounter a group of individuals with anxiety and depression symptoms. Some are treated, while others are not. Despite their treatment, both groups display varying degrees of distress. The question is, which approach is most appropriate for managing these individuals with anxiety and depression? A. Administer treatment only to those with severe symptoms. B. Administer treatment to everyone, regardless of symptom severity. C. Administer treatment only to those in the non-treatment group. D. Do not administer treatment to anyone and monitor their progress. The correct answer is B. Administer treatment to everyone, regardless of symptom severity. Acute schizophrenia episodes require emergency management. Which of the following statements about acute schizophrenia episode management and risks is true? A. Droperidol can be safely used in patients with QTC prolongation. B. Oral concentrate antipsychotics cannot be used in the acute setting. C. If physical restraints are indicated, the preferred positioning of a patient in restraints is the prone position. D. If a patient refuses oral medication, most states allow the administration of parenteral medication despite patient's objection if there is a risk to themselves or others. The correct answer is D. If a patient refuses oral medication, most states allow the administration of parenteral medication despite patient's objection if there is a risk to themselves or others. A patient who is in an acute psychotic episode lacks capacity in their current mental state. They should be treated in their medical best interest. A nurse practitioner in an independent nurse led clinic receives a notice of an audit by Medicare. Which of the following is true? A. A nurse practitioner is not responsible for errors in coding by her billing company. B. A nurse practitioner is not responsible for errors made as a result of ignorance of the required documentation. C. Current procedural terminology codes must have all corresponding levels of required history taking, physical examination, and medical decision making supported in the NPS documentation. D. Undercoding is usually prosecuted as Medicare fraud. The correct answer is C. Current procedural terminology codes must have all corresponding levels of required history taking, physical examination, and medical decision making supported in the NPS documentation. NPS must ensure billing aligns with care level and documentation supports CPT code levels in history taking, physical examination, and medical decision making, and ignorance is not a valid defense. In psychoanalysis, certain patient behaviors are signs of resistance. Which of the following is a sign of resistance? A. 
pausing between sentences. B. Correcting themselves. C. Rescheduling appointments to accommodate other important priorities, such as work. D. Blurting things out without censoring them. The correct answer is B. Correcting themselves. Signs of resistance also include remaining silent, asking unrelated questions, intellectualizing things, being late for appointments, critically analyzing the reasons for treatment methods, and censoring thoughts and ideas. A number of risk factors raise the risk of suicide in children and adolescents. Which of the following is one of those risk factors? A. Low IQ. B. Female gender. C. Heterosexual sexual orientation. D. Parental psychiatric disorder. The correct answer is D. Parental psychiatric disorder. Risk factors include prior suicide attempts, age, male gender, and gay, lesbian or bisexual individuals. A physician is tired of patients arriving late for appointments and institutes a rule. Patients who are late will only be seen for 10 minutes instead of the usual 15. The number of patients arriving late subsequently goes down. What type of learning has taken place? A. Trial and error learning. B. Classical conditioning. C. Operant conditioning. D. Coincidental learning. The correct answer is C. Operant conditioning. Conditioning in behavioral psychology is a theory that the reaction, called a response, to an object or event, called a stimulus, can be modified through learning or conditioning. A 16 year old girl presents with left arm weakness and left vision loss after arguing about a new boyfriend. She has no past medical history and has a family history of anxiety, bipolar disorder, and a cerebrovascular accident. A neurological examination is normal, blood alcohol level and urine toxicology screen are negative, and a lumbar puncture is performed. Bacterial and HSV cultures are negative, and CT and MRI of the brain and spinal cord are normal. After a week, no change in symptoms is observed and she appears unconcerned about her condition. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Conversion disorder. B. Pseudotumor cerebri. C. Factitious disorder. D. Non-convulsive status epilepticus. The correct answer is A. Conversion disorder. Conversion disorder falls under the category of somatization disorders, disorders characterized by symptoms that are suggestive of a medical condition. There are a number of criteria for avoidant personality disorder. Which of the following is one of those criteria? A. Pervasive distrust and suspiciousness of others' motives. B. Pervasive pattern of social inhibition. C. Pervasive and excessive need to be taken care of. D. Pervasive pattern of preoccupation with orderliness. The correct answer is B. Pervasive pattern of social inhibition. A consistent finding of feelings of deficiency, highly touchy when presented with constructive feedback, and shyness or self consciousness. A child is displaying mastery of Piaget's concept of conservation. According to Piaget's theory, at what stage is this child? A. Assimilation and accommodation. B. Sensor motor stage. C. Preoperational stage. D. Concrete operational stage. The correct answer is D. Concrete operational stage. In the concrete operational stage, children learn rules like conservation decentering, reversibility, and transitivity. They understand that redistributing an object doesn't affect its mass, number, or volume. This stage also involves problem-solving and mental object sorting.
foreign NP services to be covered by Medicare, certain conditions need to be met. Which of the following is one of the conditions that needs to be met for Medicare to cover an NP services? A. Directly supervised by a physician. B. Provided in an underserved care area. C. Provided based on state regulations. D. Build through a physician's clinic or a hospital. The correct answer is C. Provided based on state regulations. Nurse practitioners must use a National Provider Identification, NPI, number and must meet licensing requirements for advanced practice in order to bill. Medicare does not require that the services of the NP be billed through a physician's clinic or hospital. Unless prohibited by the state, Medicare may directly reimburse the NP for services. Freud's postulates that three primary psychic structures make up the mind and personality and are responsible for mental functioning. Which two psychic structures are present or begin to develop at birth? A. The ID and superego. B. The ID and the ego. C. The superego and the ego. D. Only the ID. The correct answer is B. The ID and the ego. The ID is present at birth, the ego begins to develop at birth, and the superego begins to fully develop around six years of age. A Caribbean Latino family is concerned about their adolescent child, who is described as a drama queen and has an attack of the nerves. The caregiver is exhausted by the child's label and irritable behavior. The family is seeking a nursing theory to assist in their care. A. Theory of cultural care, Madeline Leininger. B. Theory of self-care, Dorothy Oram. C. Human becoming theory, Rosemary Parse. D. Health promotion theory, Nola Pender. The correct answer is A. Theory of cultural care, Madeline Leininger. Madeline Leininger's theory of cultural care emphasizes cultural-based knowledge for comprehensive patient care, excluding nursing interventions due to potential offenses in certain Latino cultures. A consulting psychiatrist shows a patient three $1 bills and hides the bills while she watches. The patient is unable to locate the hidden dollar bills after several minutes. A problem in what area best explains her deficits? A. Procedural memory. B. Remote memory. C. Recall. D. Episodic memory. The correct answer is C. Recall. Problems of encoding, consolidation, and retrieval will cause errors of recall. Errors of recall might trigger other bedside tests such as hiding objects around the patient's room and asking the patient to locate them after several minutes. A 27-year-old patient reports twice-weekly binge-eating episodes for the past eight months, causing guilt and fear of weight gain. They live alone and prepare meals at home. Their vital signs and physical exam are unremarkable. The patient's best treatment is to consider a medication. A family-based therapy. b. Cognitive behavioral therapy. c. Biofeedback therapy. d. Food journal to raise awareness of eating patterns. The correct answer is b. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the first-line therapy for the treatment of bulimia nervosa and aims to change the way the patient thinks about themselves and their disorder. Schizophrenic patients may experience hallucinations. Which of the following types of hallucinations is most common in schizophrenia patients, occurring in at least two-thirds of patients with schizophrenia over the course of their illness? A. Visual B. Auditory C. Olfactory D. Formication or tactile The correct answer is B. Auditory. 
auditory hallucinations are common in schizophrenia patients, with visual hallucinations being the second most common. Gustatory, olfactory, and tactile hallucinations are less common, with 13 to 17 percent experiencing olfactory and tactile hallucinations, according to a study. Mary, a 26-year-old woman, has been experiencing frequent binge eating and self-induced vomiting for several months, as referred by her primary care physician. Russell's sign indicates her disorder. A. Halitosis and tooth decay due to stomach acids. B. Scars and abrasions on hands from using them to induce vomiting. C. Enlarged parotid glands and elevated amylase. D. Hypokalemia due to vomiting. The correct answer is B. Scars and abrasions on hands from using them to induce vomiting. Russell's sign, a physical indicator of mental illness, is primarily found in patients with eating disorders like bulimia nervosa or anorexia nervosa. However, it's not a reliable indicator as other factors are associated with eating disorders. Bulimics who can induce vomiting through hands-free purging do not have Russell's sign. The following are all ways to describe the central tendency of data. Which one is the most commonly occurring value in a data set? A. Mean B. Median C. Mode D. Mean and mode the correct answer is C. Mode. The mode is the most commonly occurring value in the dataset. All three of these values reflect the central tendency, which is most significant or reflective of a particular dataset varies. Valproic acid is used to treat seizures and bipolar disorder and prevent migraine headaches. Which of the following statements regarding poisoning of valproic acid is true? A. Valproate overdose can lead to CNS depression and is often fatal. B. Severe poisoning that involves a coma is typically above a level of 850 mg per liter. C. Hemodialysis is never used to treat valproate overdose. D. Thrombocytosis and cerebral edema commonly occur. The correct answer is B. Severe poisoning that involves a coma is typically above a level of 850 mg per liter. VPA toxicity can cause CNS depression, respiratory depression, nausea, and myoclonus. Lab abnormalities include hypernatremia, elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis, and hypocalcemia. Cerebral edema may occur 12 to 4 days after ingestion, and activated charcoal can be given early. Serial head CT scans are recommended. Mahler theorizes that the disruption of a certain stage of infant development leads children to develop narcissistic personality disorder. What stage is this? A. Symbiotic phase. B. Autistic phase. C. Rapprochement. D. Practicing. The correct answer is A. Symbiotic phase. Mahler's theory is based on psychoanalytic observation of children ages 6 months to 3 years. Mahler's work has been expanded by other theorists to understand the basis of personality disorder. The symbiotic phase occurs until about 5 months of age. The infant recognizes his or her mother but lacks a sense of individuality. A 28-year-old Iraq war veteran experiences nightmares and avoids reminders of an ambush, seeking the most effective medication for his condition. Which medication has the largest body of evidence for the treatment of his condition? A. Paroxetine B. Fluoxetine C. Venlafaxine D. Diazepam The correct answer is A. Paroxetine. Paroxetine and sertraline are the only two medications approved for the treatment of PTSD. Venlafaxine has shown promising results with its initial studies for the treatment of PTSD. 
Other SSRIs are commonly used, but do not have an FDA indication. The fetal malformation rate of fetuses exposed to SSRI medications has been tracked by researchers. What is the rate of formation among fetuses exposed to SSRI medications? A. 0.6% B. 1% C. 2% D. 2.6% The correct answer is D. 2.6% The overall fetal malformation rate with SSRIs is 2.6%. This rate is consistent with reports in the general population. Pediatric patients have different pharmacokinetics as compared to adult patients. Which of the following is true about pharmacokinetics in pediatric patients? A. They have a higher metabolic capacity. B. They have less efficient renal elimination of drugs. C. They have relatively more adipose tissue. D. They have a lower relative volume of extracellular water. The correct answer is A. They have a higher metabolic capacity. Pediatric patients have a higher metabolic capacity, and drugs must be given at shorter intervals, neuroleptics, tricyclics, and methylphenidate. A nurse practitioner is prescribing controlled substances under the delegated authority of her physician employer, who has requested she limit prescribing to Schedule 5 and Schedule 4 substances. Which of the following medications is a Schedule 4 substance? A. Marijuana B. Lomotol C. Valium D. Percocet The correct answer is C. Valium. Valium is a Schedule IV controlled substance. Schedule IV controlled substances have low potential for abuse, compared to substances in Schedule III. A psychiatrist is looking to prescribe pharmacologic treatment to a patient with chronic alcohol use disorder with a major depressive episode. They've chosen one of the antidepressants listed which has a tetracyclic structure that works by antagonism of presynaptic alpha-2 agonists and postsynaptic serotonergic receptors. Which of the following medications is it? A. Amitriptyline B. Chlorpromazine C. Mirtazapine D. Doxepin The correct answer is C. Mirtazapine Mirtazapine, a tetracyclic antidepressant, works by blocking presynaptic and postsynaptic serotonin 5-HT3 and 5-HT2 receptors, potentially blocking reward mechanisms for alcohol abuse. An adult patient reports periods of happiness and energy, followed by irritability and loneliness, impacting relationships and work performance over the past decade without causing psychiatric hospitalization or significant financial issues. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Malingering B. Major depressive disorder C. Bipolar 1 disorder D. Borderline personality disorder E. Cyclothymic disorder The correct answer is E. Cyclothymic disorder. Cyclothymic disorder is diagnosed when there are multiple periods of hypomanic symptoms and then periods of depressive symptoms, but not meeting the criteria for a major depressive episode. Nurse practitioners serving as advocates for healthcare should understand the rules and regulations governing their practice. Which of the following is true? A. Medicare provides coverage only for individuals over the age of 65. B. Part A Medicare coverage allows beneficiaries to enroll in a private plan as an alternative to the traditional fee-for-service plan. C. Prescription drug benefits are provided through Part B. D. Part A of Medicare is funded by a 2.9% tax on earnings paid by employers and workers. The correct answer is D. 
Part A of Medicare is funded by a 2.9% tax on earnings paid by employers and workers. Medicare consists of four parts, with Part A being the hospital insurance program, which is funded by a 2.9% tax on employer and worker earnings, covering inpatient services, home health, skilled nursing facilities, and hospice care. Lorazepam has a relatively short half-life. However, it exerts sustained action nonetheless. What is the mechanism by which lorazepam exerts sustained action despite its relatively short half-life? A. Higher lipophilicity. B. Lower lipophilicity. C. Conversion into active metabolites. D. Metabolism by liver. The correct answer is B. Lower lipophilicity. The onset and duration of pharmacologic activity vary between highly lipophilic benzodiazepine diazepam and less lipophilic hydroxylated derivatives lorazepam and oxazepam due to differences in systemic kinetics and uptake into the brain. Higher lipophilicity leads to greater metabolic clearance and first-pass metabolism while less lipophilicity produces clinical effects slowly but may provide sustained relief. As part of the body, the CYP450 system is affected by alcohol interactions. Which of the following statements is true regarding the relationship between alcohol and the CYP450 system? A. Acute alcohol ingestion lowers the rate of drug metabolism. B. Acute alcohol ingestion will result in decreased levels of most benzodiazepines. C. Chronic alcohol ingestion is associated with a decreased binding of ethanol to cytochrome P450. D. Chronic alcohol ingestion neither causes enzyme induction nor inhibition. The correct answer is A. Acute alcohol ingestion lowers the rate of drug metabolism. Acute or binge use of alcohol lowers the rate of drug metabolism and alcohol serves as an enzyme inhibitor. Which of the following describes a quality associated with critical thinking in nursing practice? A. Process focused. B. It should be based on knowledge. C. Patient driven. D. Performed by an individual. The correct answer is C. Patient-driven. Critical thinking in nursing is patient-driven, purposeful, and outcome-focused, involving knowledge and experience. It involves constant evaluation and re-evaluation, taking patient values into account when applying standards, policies, and procedures. A 48-year-old male with progressive arm pruritus and paresthesias presents with chest and back pain. After being discharged home, he returns with worsening chest pain, agitation, and mental confusion. He was bitten by a bat four to five weeks prior. What should the patient be told regarding disease evolution? A. Acute neurological phase, paralytic rabies, occurs in 40% of patients and presents with flaccid paralysis. B. 80% of patients may develop an aggressive course with a fast progression. C. Vocal cord paralysis is rare. D. Non-neural tissues can be affected. The correct answer is D. Non-neural tissues can be affected. Variant forms of rabies may have a different course, requiring minimal inoculums and causing infection in non-neural tissues. A collaborative agreement is a written agreement between a supervising physician and an NP that outlines the NP's role and responsibility in the clinical practice. Which of the following practitioners cannot sign a collaborative agreement with a nurse under the Nurse Practice Act? A. Chiropractors. B. Osteopaths. C. Physicians. The correct answer is A. Chiropractors. A collaborative agreement is a written agreement between a supervising physician and nurse practitioner that outlines the nurse practitioner's role and responsibility to the clinical practice. This agreement is sometimes known as a protocol. 
Chiropractors are not considered physicians under the Nurse Practice Act.